In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born of the Blessed Virgin, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. During this time of pandemic, the bishops of Australia have agreed to re-consecrate or entrust Australia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Help of Christians, who has been Australia's official patron since 1844. Yet the story goes back even further to 200 years ago this month when Father John Joseph Terry arrived in Australia. He petitioned the governor for a site for a Catholic chapel. He was given one on the edge of the then Sydney town, close to the convict barracks and vegetable gardens. Father Terry had been ordained only months after the defeat of Napoleon allowed the release of Pope Pius VII from prison, his return to Rome and his introduction of the feast of Mary, help of Christians, into the Roman calendar in thanksgiving. The young priest was excited to dedicate the first church on this site to her name, and by implication to make this the first nation and continent put under her protection. With the arrival of Bishop Polding in 1835, this Mother Church of Australia became its first cathedral, and Mary Help of Christians continued as the unofficial patron of the fledgling Catholic community throughout the land. In 1844, at the first Provincial Synod of Australia, and again in 1885 at the first Plenary Council of Australasia, the nation was formally dedicated to St Mary, Help of Christians. That dedication was renewed by the bishops of Australia in the Marian year of 1988 and at the dawn of the third Christian millennium in 2001. Often in history, the Christian people have asked for Our Lady's intercession on their behalf, especially in time of danger. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. They would pray. In this time of pandemic, when lives and health are in danger, when so much of ordinary life has been curtailed, when even our public worship is severely constrained, we join the bishops' conferences of many nations in reconsecrating our land and entrusting our people to Mary's protective prayers. O Immaculate Mary, help of Christians, Queen of heaven and earth, and tender mother of humanity, at this time when a pandemic threatens all your children, we entrust to you our nation, Australia, and all who live in this country. We commit to your intercession all the members of our community, beginning with the weakest ones, from the unborn to the sick, the disabled and the elderly. We commit to you our families, our young and old, and all who are vulnerable, those who are quarantined or anxious, we consecrate to your Immaculate Heart those who have lost their livelihood or employment, our pastors and other essential service workers, and our leaders at this time. We implore your intercession, especially for the protection of doctors and nurses, and those who minister to the contagious sick in this crisis. Reign over us, Mother of God, and teach us how to make the heart of Jesus reign and triumph in us and around us, as it has reigned and triumphed in you. Amen.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Oh, brothers and sisters, welcome to the Mass for the feast day of our own patron, Mary, help of Christians, patroness of Australia and of this cathedral, dedicated in her name. Now let us acknowledge our sins now and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who placed the love of Our Lady, help of Christians, in the hearts of those who brought the Catholic faith to these shores, grant through her intercession wisdom to our leaders and integrity to our citizens, so that under her protection, Australia may know harmony, justice, and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Wisdom brings up her own sons and cares for those who seek her. Whoever loves her loves life. Those who wait on her early will be filled with happiness. Whoever holds her close will inherit honour and wherever he walks the Lord will bless him. Those who serve her minister to the Holy One, and the Lord love those who love her. Whoever obeys her judges aright, and whoever pays attention to her dwells secure. If he trusts himself to her, he will inherit her, and his descendants will remain in possession of her. For though she takes him at first through winding ways, bringing fear and faintness on him, plaguing him with her discipline until she can trust him and testing him with her ordeals. In the end, she will lead him back to the straight road and reveal her secrets to him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The language of the cross may be illogical to those who are not on the way to salvation, but those of us who are on the way see it as God's power to save. As scripture says, I shall destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing all the learning of the learned. Where are the philosophers now? Where are the scribes? Where are any of our thinkers today? Do you see now how God has shown up the foolishness of human wisdom? If it was God's wisdom 
that human wisdom should not know God, it was because God wanted to save those who have faith through the foolishness of the message that we preach. And so while the Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here are we preaching a crucified Christ. To the Jews, an obstacle that they cannot get over. To the pagans, madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today we joyfully celebrate our patronal feast of Our Lady help of Christians. She's patron saint of Australia and of this Cathedral Basilica, the Mother Church of Australia. 
named as it is in honour of the Mother of God, the Mother of Christ, and Mother and Helper of her Divine Son's disciples. The Lord Jesus gave his mother to us as he was dying on the cross, saying to the beloved disciple, Behold your mother, having said to Mary, Woman, behold your son. Even before that moment, of course, the Blessed Virgin had a treasured place among God's people as the mother of Jesus, who so lovingly conceived and gave birth to the Saviour, pondered in her heart the words spoken about him, told the people in Cana of Galilee to do whatever he tells you, opening the way to his first great sign and opening the way to faith in him. This she continues to do for us. The Blessed Virgin Mary has always been an integral and vital part of the church from the beginning. The writings of the great theologians, the teachings of the ecumenical councils, the sacred liturgy, in all of these things, Our Lady is constantly present. And especially, we can say, in the daily prayer life of Christians. She was certainly present in the hearts of Archbishop Polding and his fellow pastors of the flock when they named Mary Help of Christians, patroness of Australia in 1844. Even earlier than that, she was present in the thoughts and prayers of Father Terry on the day in 1821 when he blessed the foundation stone of the first Catholic church in this land which he placed under her patronage and title. This month marks 200 years since Father Terry's arrival here in Sydney, and we look forward to marking the bicentenary of Old St Mary's Cathedral next year. And I think it is well known that in the years before Father Terry came, when there was no priest in all this vast land, It was the Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary which sustained the faith of the Catholics of the colony. Our Lady has been loved and honoured in this place since before she appeared to St. Catherine Labore in Rue de Bac in Paris, before she appeared to St. Bernadette in Lourdes, before she appeared to St. Jacinta, St. Francisco and the servant of God, Lucia, in Fatima. The stained glass window which depicts the laying the foundation stone of the first St Mary's has above that scene a large image of the woman described in chapter 12 of the book of the Apocalypse. A woman adorned with the sun standing on the moon and with 12 stars on her head for a crown. In the complex and deeply symbolic imagery of the Apocalypse, who is she? Does she signify the mother of Jesus? Does she signify the church? Or may not she represent both? In building their chapel and dedicating it to Mary, the Catholics of early Sydney were showing the link between the two retelling in their turn what they had received from their forebears and ultimately from the apostles, that the eternal Son of God took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary, coming into our world as Saviour and Lord, and that in the church that same Son of God comes to us in word and sacrament. The great Saint Ambrose taught that the Virgin Mary is the type or image of the church in the order of faith, of charity, and of perfect union with Christ. Mary's faith and the church's faith, Mary's love and the church's love, 
Mary's union with Jesus and the church's union with him. In our own prayer lives, this parallel between Mary and the church shows itself to be true time and time again. Are not the times of difficulty, of pain or bereavement, of uncertainty or need, when Catholics rightly turn to the church for support and comfort, also the times when we turn to Mary for support and comfort? It is because we sense in faith that Mary is a mother for us and has time and time again over the last 2,000 years shown herself to be our helper, auxilium Christianorum, comforting, warning of dangers, protecting and defending us as one higher than the angels may and always gesturing towards her son with the words, do whatever he tells you. No wonder then that at this time of pandemic, of disruption, isolation, financial insecurity, with the threatening shadow of sickness and even death lurking, that the Australian bishops have in these days renewed that consecration of our country and our hearts to the sinless Mother of God, Mary, help of Christians. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us from all danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. of faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Blessed Virgin Mary has always shown her concern and protection for her children, especially in times of difficulty. Let us ask her to join her intercessions with ours as we come to the Merciful Father. For the Catholic Church in Australia, that united heart and souls with the Pope and our bishops, we may join in continuous prayer with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, Australia, that our leaders may preserve and promote justice, peace and freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For Australia and the whole world in this time of pandemic disease, that our knowledge, wisdom, compassion, skill, solidarity, and above all, trust in God will help us to prevail over disease and all that corrupts. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For our families that like St. John the Beloved, they may make a place for Mary in their homes and their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the community who worship in and serve this Cathedral of Mary, help of Christians, that our heavenly patroness may intercede for us in all our needs. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that the prayers of Our Lady may help them to their heavenly inheritance, especially our deceased parishioners and benefactors and clergy. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we thank you for peace and freedom in this beautiful land. May we continue to know Mary's powerful help here on earth and one day rejoice with her forever in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful presented in commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and forgiveness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, 
Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Refreshed by this heavenly sacrament, Lord God, we pray for Australia, our earthly home, that with the help of the Virgin Mary, we may become a new creation in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. word of gratitude to those few who are able to be with us in the cathedral this morning, to the members of the cathedral choir and music department, to our acolytes and sacristan. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.